Today we want to briefly consider four important concepts related to signal processing. These concepts are sample rate, Nyquist theorem, aliasing, and analysis lines. The time domain data is a record of the simple vibration amplitudes or pressure differences that occur over a specific period of time. When collecting and processing time domain data, a few concepts are vitally important to understand. First, the test engineer should consider what sample rate is being used when collecting the data. Sample rate in vibration testing controls the rate of analog to digital signal conversion. A high sample rate acquires more data in a time frame and can help form a more accurate representation of the original signal. As the sample rate increases, the reconstruction of the signal gets closer to perfect. Note, of course, that perfect reconstruction is possible only in theory. There is a rule of thumb that the sample rate must be greater than twice the max frequency of interest. This rule is called the Nyquist rule or the Nyquist theorem. If you plan to run a test collecting data between 20 and 20,000 Hertz, in this particular test I was trying to run, I was going between 8 Hertz and 20,000 Hertz, then the sample rate has to exceed 40,000 samples per second. I tried on the Vibration View software to pick a number lower than 40,000 samples. I picked 24,000 and this error popped up. Tests cannot run because the highest frequency exceeds 42% of the sample rate. So I needed to pick a sample rate far greater than 24,000 and I need to pick a sample rate of 48,000. 48,000 sample rate um, would work on the vibration research software. Um, this is in order to obtain sufficient data in order to properly and accurately represent your signal. Let's take a look at some situations where that plays out. If you have a low sample rate, then you're not going to get an accurate representation of the signal. I have three scenarios pictured here where the sample rate is too low. In the first case, the low sample rate makes the sine wave that has a frequency of about 5 Hz on this picture appear to have a frequency of about 1.5. I sampled every 3 quarters of a wave. And if we were to connect these dots, we would get a curve that would peak here, valley here, peak here, and that's about a one and a half hertz plot that we would get, while the original green line is a five and a half, five hertz sample. In the second scenario, I just picked a sample here after um, half a cycle and then another half a cycle and half a cycle always on the equilibrium position. This gives us a nonsensical set of data. This would give us a flat line that would say there's no signal at all. And in this third case I picked peaks and valleys all the way along the line and this would produce some kind of a triangle shaped representation. So when you have too low of a sample rate, you do not get accurate representation of the original signal. In fact, one problem that arises is called aliasing. In the case where we sampled at too low of a sample rate, the 5 Hertz signal, represented in green here, was represented, if I would have connected these points, by a 1.5 Hertz signal. Whenever a higher frequency signal is represented by a lower frequency signal because of a low sample rate, you have a situation called aliasing. To avoid aliasing, the test engineer needs to select a high sample rate, a rate greater than double the highest frequency of the spectrum. So here, just to illustrate the idea of a high sample rate, I selected several dots per cycle 
And you can see with all of these red dots, if we were to connect them, we would get a much closer representation to the real sine wave than if we under sampled. Final concept for today, the test engineer needs to be aware of how many analysis lines are selected when converting the time domain signal to the frequency domain. For example, I had a random vibration test that we ran on that fixture with three arms that we've seen in other demonstrations. And I took this time data and converted it into frequency data this particular plot is a transmissibility, not an FFT, but it's still a frequency domain situation. And I chose very low analysis lines of 2048. The analysis lines of 2048 gave me bins, frequency bins that are two hertz wide. And that kind of resolution is very poor and results in a plot that does not represent the real frequency information. This has a peak of some 34 G's per G transmissibility. And the real frequency domain had a transmissibility of 397 G's per G and very smooth plot and other resonances showed up when I chose a very high analysis lines of 524,000. So test engineers need to collect data with high sample rates, exceeding twice the max frequency of the spectrum, and they also need to analyze the data to convert it from the time domain to the frequency domain with as many analysis lines as possible.